Welcome to the Man Cave Podcast with Dan Casper. All right, let's do a little local sports rundown brought to you by Amundsen's Appliance Center. Let's start off with the hockey world. Uh, Scott Parker calling it a career as as coach for, for Chai High. Um, I know, I mean, that's in, that's, that's in your area, but what a career. What a, what a career. career. Uh, 37 years as the head coach at Chippewa. Was there a year before that as an assistant coach? Um, you know, what can you say? I'm, you know, more than 400 wins, uh, seven trips to States. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, one of their best teams arguably that they had this past year. Yeah. Know, being ranked number one, winning the conference title, going unbeaten in the big rivers, which does not happen very much because the big rivers is, in my opinion, the best hockey conference in the state. Mm-hmm. When you look at the Memorial and Hudson and North. Mm-hmm. New Richmond, now them being added in recently, Rice Lake, I mean, Menominee River Falls, like, I mean, but just to be able to consistently have a contending program for that long is tough. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I got a chance, you know, me and some media members talked with this guy yesterday, but also getting a chance to talk with some of his former players and, you know, assistant coaches, you know, just talking about how he was able to be successful. And, you know, Scott Parker is a very honest caring person like he'll be you know we talked a little bit earlier about you know honesty and you know with pat murphy Mm -hmm. it's kind of a maybe it's a little bit like that where he's you know he's you know he'll be honest with you about things but he also you also know he cares about it and you know that was kind of you know the way he always wanted to to approach things and Mm -hmm. he's you know being a being an educator as well he kind of understood like different people learn different ways so you got to kind of have to you know tweak what you do but not too much because you still need to stay true to your standards and that's Certainly, what he and his staffs over the years did. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got a a really good piece up at uh, Chippewa dot com for anybody that wants to to check it out uh, for for the Chippewa Herald. But something in the water in Chippewa. I mean, for coaches that stick around I for was a while, that, and yeah. they, they they've had some really good success over the years. Chuck Rakovich has finished his fiftieth year as as a coach. I think it's, mm-hmm. it's about the same thirty six, thirty seven years at Chippewa. Uh, Long time boys. Uh, Golf coach Rick Silloway was there for a long time, and still he until he passed a few years ago. Mm-hmm. But um, you know they've had some really long term coaches there, mm-hmm. and the, and success within those respective programs. Right. So, uh, big shoes to fill. Big shoes for whoever it is, and you know the ball's rolling on that, and you know it's going to be an entirely new staff. Mm-hmm. So you know that's something that's you know it's going to take a little time to to kind of put, but you know the the plan is ideally to have that in place in the, during the summer, so that way once you get to like summer workouts and stuff, that new coach can be there working with his team, mm-hmm. whoever it is. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's it's going to be different. I mean, Scott Parker has obviously been there since I've been in Chippewa, so that's I mean that's always been a constant. Right. I mean, but, but now I mean you know well reserved retirement. I mean he. Mm-hmm. Retired from you know, from teaching last year. Now he's retiring from coaching. He's going to have some free time. Not not all. You know, he's not going to just you know become a hermit. He's you know he's still very connected with uh, UW Eau Claire, which is at alma mater. He was a member of their 1984 title team, uh, national title team. So I mean, he's hoping to still kind of be, maybe be involved there with uh, Coach Lone and the and the Blue Golds. But um, uh, yeah, he'll he'll you'll you'll still see him around. Mm-hmm. You know, he'll just you know maybe be a little more you know, <laughs> a, in the a background little more, a little, a little bit. more relaxed now. Yeah, and, but yeah, definitely in the background. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, definitely check out Brandon's uh, piece uh, Chippewa uh, dot com there. Uh, where else? I mean, you got some golf that you're going to be checking out. Yeah, later it's a busy today. day for me today. Uh, the big Bloomer Boys Golf invites this morning up in Bloomer at a Bloomer Memorial, our Veterans Memorial Golf Course. A lot of local teams there. Uh, obviously, Bloomer's hosting. They're off to a fantastic start, mm-hmm. bringing back their entire lineup from a team that was at sectionals last year. Uh, McDowell Regis, Kadat, Stanley Boyd. I mean, a lot of a lot of the smaller local teams from this area will be there for that one. That's always a fun day because it's just such a big golf meet. It's one of like as far as the number of teams, it's probably one of the bigger golf meets you'll see. Mm-hmm. But um, and then a couple of big softball doubleheaders today as well. Triple Falls hosting Superior, and then uh, showed on you know between two of the top three teams in the Western Clover Belt with McDonald hosting Fall Creek in a oh. doubleheader. So as you yeah. said, two of the better, two of the top three teams. I think th- yep. those two along with. Uh, Thorpe, I believe, are still the those are, they're still unbeaten in conference play. So, okay. but those are the those are the top three teams in the standings. Okay, uh, really quick, I wanted to go back to hockey really quick. Uh, the Steel, their coach staff's coming back and they renewed. They two. renewed the lease with Chip Ice Arena, mm-hmm. so they'll be at the at CIA for another three years. And yeah, bringing back uh, Chris Ratzlaff and Steve Doherty. Um, mm-hmm. You know, a, a successful first year for them, even if you know they were a little disappointed missing out on the playoffs. But still, I mean, with a really young team, I mean, that's a 
you know, SEAL team. That's going to look a little different next year. You get some local faces that are moving on, Peyton Platter, Joe Kelly. But they, I think they have a good base set because they had so many younger guys that could potentially be back. They're already, I mean, they're already hard at work for the for the off season. I actually saw Steve Doherty up at the ice arena yesterday, and we were talking a little bit about that. And he had mentioned that, you know, they're, I mean, they're, you know, knee deep into their off season stuff already. They've been out scouting some tournaments already. They've got the NH- NAHL draft coming up in June. Mm-hmm. So, and that season starts this fall. So, I mean, it'll be, for them, it'll be training camp before you know it. Yeah. Uh, Baseball-wise, I know you were just, uh, was it in Bloomer the other day, too? I was, I was actually in Chippewa. Chippewa, okay. But, uh, yeah, for the uh, uh, Bloomer and McDonald baseball. Okay. Um, and then they played again last night. So, um, Western Cloverbelt this year is, you know, it's, you know, Regis picked up a win over Kadat on uh, last night. Uh, you got Regis, you got Fall Creek, who's got back with the varsity program for the first time in a few years. They were actually co-oping with Black River Falls for a few years. Okay, but they're they're near at the top of the conference. There, you got Bloomer and Kadat kind of hot on their heels. Um, you know, it's going to be quite the race in the in the in the Western Clover Belt, mm-hmm. and then kind of the same thing in the Big Rivers, where I think I mentioned this last week, where you don't necessarily, I don't think, have that one dominant team. But you have a bunch of really good ones. Mm-hmm. Chippa Falls, Eau Claire Memorial, Eau Claire North is always good. Right. Um, and Menominee's picked up some big wins early on here in the season. Mm-hmm. Hudson River Falls are always in that top three or four. Mm-hmm. Uh, tennis, I know you were uh, watching some action uh, a couple days ago. I was on ago. Tuesday at Chippa yeah. Falls. Yep. Uh, with a, with a, in their duel with Eau Claire North and kind of being able to tell the story of their of a, kind of an interesting connection with a bunch of you know guys on that team where – you know they they play tennis, but actually they they join tennis through pickleball, mm, which really? is yeah like their their top doubles team of uh, G Mason and uh, Colby Stoll and their top two singles players of Kale Dillenbeck and uh, Jackson Blake were all involved with pickleball before tennis. Interesting. Yes, and that, <laughs> yeah, so that's and for those of you who don't know pickleball, I mean you you chances are if you've been driving around you've seen pickleball courts. Yes, like it's like it's like tennis but it's smaller. Or you've seen it on TV. Or you've seen it on TV. Yeah. It's a really quickly growing sport. Yep. And it's, I mean, it, it's it is a sport that is picking up, you know, in in popularity, you mm-hmm. know, very quickly. But kind of talking to them about that, and they all said like they prefer pickleball. Like it's, it's interesting. I think a lot of times you think of pickleball, you think of like that as a sport for older people. Mm-hmm. But it's, I mean, it's a sport for everyone of all ages. Mm-hmm. So and that, that that was just kind of an interesting being able to talk to them about you know how they got in with that sport and then obviously the gateway to, to tennis and right. how pickleball is something they said, you know, we can play this the rest of our lives. For us, mm-hmm. it's like golf. Yeah. For you and me, it's like golf. I mean, we mm-hmm. picked it up in a, at our younger age and it's something that you can just go and do. Yep. Exactly. So, uh, also, uh, I wanted to, cause you, I, I, uh, for track and field, uh, also a few days ago, you, you had an article about, uh, Trent Nita. Yes. From uh, Brown Cole. Yes. Uh, won a couple of states, burnt titles in Division Three last year down in the state. Um, and this year, I mean, he's got bigger goals. He's got a football scholarship in his back pocket to Minnesota Duluth. And, you know, this spring he's going out there with the goal of, uh, you know, trying obviously to get back to state, but to, to set the state record in the 100, you know, in, in his sprint races when he gets there. And he was pretty close last year. So it's a very realistic goal. Last night he was actually up in Rice Lake for the Rice Lake track invite. He was third in the 100 and the 200. Jackson LeMay from Chippewa Falls won the 100. So, okay. I mean, he went, that was a very good, I think, meet for him to be in just because you've got a lot of, you know, Division One Big Rivers type schools there. And so, you know, you're going to really get challenged. And mm-hmm. he was, but that's, you know, that's what you want. And this is, this is a kid you've been kind of covering the last couple of years, few years, right? Right. right? You know, and, and, I think was it you that mentioned you know football is is like his, yeah football is his thing like he yeah. he joined track last year specifically to kind of up his stock for football mm-hmm. and he said that it, that's exactly what it did he got on the radar with football coaches more so because of his track season you know especially down state when he won mm-hmm. you know two state titles like he, I mean he's fast I mean, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no other way to say that I mean he he's super fast and he's he's going to be going up to Duluth with a in a, in a class of a lot of local kids that are actually in that, you know, Duluth uh, incoming freshman class, including Carter Bovey from Triple Falls. So, mm-hmm. you know, the the future is definitely bright for him. Mm-hmm. You and I have played softball against his dad, too, and yeah. his, dad's a, his dad's a monster. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So it shouldn't be too much of a surprise, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, also, too, just some WIA stuff, but uh, the NIL did get voted down, mm-hmm. which... Anybody thinking? Okay, it's not. It's going to come. It sounds yeah. like at some. point. I think point. it's just yeah. going to be. It's just something that's going to probably be continued to talked about and worked on and tweaked and mm-hmm. everything. Like, 
you know, because there's still a lot you have to kind of figure out with it. I mm-hmm. think that was kind of the thing, and not even so much with NIL in college, but like you just don't want it to come too quick. Right. And then suddenly it's the Wild West. Mm-hmm. You, know, you want to kind of have a little bit more of a crystallized idea of like, okay, well, this is what it means and this is kind of the impact it could have. Right. Yeah. Uh, and really, does CRBL start this weekend? CRBL does start this okay. weekend. Uh, four games on Sunday. Hopefully, they get them in because of the you know obviously the you know With the weather the yeah. weather's looking a little a little tough, dicey a little bit but yeah. yeah CRBL season starts this weekend and really gets underway obviously once you get into March and mm-hmm. or I'm sorry to April or May yeah I'll just start, I'll just you, keep you, saying you, months and eventually say months, I'll get there yeah, but exactly uh, <laughs> yeah but then that season will be that'll be rolling. Mm-hmm. All right, the Carpet City Flooring Center local spotlights uh, this week goes to? I am going to go with uh, one we haven't talked about, but we're going to go with New Auburn softball. Okay. New Auburn softball, Tuesday night, picked up a big win over Bruce. And New Auburn's uh, softball, their first win of the year, their first win actually since returning to varsity play. Uh, they, they did some JV games last year after several years of not having a program. Mm-hmm. But uh, Coach Courtney Quinn up there is really – you know they they've got a, they've got a good group of kind of a lot of younger players and they're just trying to kind of obviously get the program back going and you know to get a win and it was a big win I mean they had they scored a ton of runs in beating Bruce so you know there's a lot of teams that are kind of like that in the area you know New Auburn baseball and like Holcomb Cornell baseball as well are teams that you know for a while didn't have a varsity team and now they're trying to get back into it and it's it's tough when you go mm-hmm. three four or five six whatever years it is without a varsity program and you want to get it back going like. You're really starting from ground zero, which yeah. means for a lot of these kids, you know, maybe you played in you know little league or whatever, but it's just such a big jump up. And that was even something I talked about last week uh, with like Holton Cornell's baseball coach, mm-hmm. just about that process because they've got ten players and I think eight of them are freshmen. You know, and I know New Auburn softball has a lot of younger players too, so it's it's tough. But right. you know, being able to get a win like that is such a boost for a program that's just looking for you know you're just looking for you know. Not liter- you know, literally, but also you're just looking for a win. You're just looking for something to be happy with and mm-hmm. something that you can build excitement for. And obviously, they got that Tuesday. So we're going to go with New Auburn softball. All right, good one there. Blue Golds wise, I know track and field. They've got uh, again weather. It's supposed to be home, uh, so we'll see how that goes. And then I know some of them are at uh, the Drake relays as well down in Iowa. You got uh, tennis that's in action, lacrosse that's also in action. Women's golf uh, going to be going up against uh, Stout. And such, so you got a full slate of, and baseball is going up against Platteville uh, over there too. So full slate of Blue Golds action. You can check it out at bluegolds.com. Stout uh, Athletics, kind of uh, the, the same thing here too. Uh, a lot of, um, you know, we mentioned golf's going up against each other. You got the the Stout, or the excuse me, the the track meet that's going on for for you uh, for for Eau Claire uh, as well. But believe it or not. The college spring sports are starting to to kind of wrap up here too. Yeah, they always get going, especially track. Yeah. yeah, they get they get going, and you know, for the most part, obviously, the weather this spring has been pretty good for them because mm-hmm. they got going a little bit earlier. Yeah, um, baseball for first out is going to be going up against uh, Oshkosh, and that's the thing too. Like baseball, just got a couple more weeks left coming up here. You know, softball's only got a couple more weeks coming up here too before conference tournaments and such. So, but uh, yeah, that's going to be for for baseball, big one against uh, Oshkosh. Uh, coming up uh, this uh, this weekend uh, here to it, but again a full on slate. Stout softball uh, is going to be they're taking on Oshkosh as well. So there you have it. 